ever notice how when someone says, so, tell me about yourself. We find ourselves running through our resume like somehow every interaction is a job interview. I know relationships can be work, but there must be a better way. Almost a decade ago, I started my own business and became Kim from Bandbox. I kept my head down, did the work, to the point where people didn't even know my name and I walked around introducing myself as Kim from Bandbox just to save time. I'm by no means ungrateful though. I created a thriving fashion business that empowered everyday people to be bold enough to explore the more colorful side. Over time, I started to notice that my identity had become synonymous with what somebody could, somebody could read about me on a two by three inch piece of cardstock, and that just didn't sit right with me. After all, I learned to sew because I love design, and because I couldn't find a short dress that didn't fit me like a blouse. The problem was that I was always too afraid that people wouldn't see me beyond that one thing that I was known for. And that's the thing about tying our identities to our careers because for the most part, these positions are not meant to evolve, but as people, we are. As we enter new chapters in our lives, having experiences and challenges that transcend our jobs, moving on can leave us questioning our positions in our own lives. So I guess the truth was that it wasn't that people couldn't see me that way. It was that I couldn't see myself. Before I was Kim from Bandbox, I landed this great job with tons of perks, where I lived in constant fear of getting fired or written up for reasons beyond my control most times. <laughs> I worked hard. I, I was always in the hustle, always too tired or too busy to do anything that wasn't work. By the time I was done with a six week training to do this job, I was already diagnosed with anxiety and depression, which to be honest, kind of felt like a gradual decline than a sudden shift. You see, there's an emptiness that comes with depression, a hopelessness that multiplies as it reinforces every thought in your mind that says that you are nothing and should do nothing. That massive detachment from every positive emotion is beyond words and is usually only understood by those of us who've been there. So bear with me as I try to break it down for you. Our emotions, and our feelings are related, but they're not the same. Emotions are an intense, immediate response to your experiences. On the other hand, feelings, they tend to inform your actions and are a more habitual, long-term response to your emotions. So, anger is the emotion that leads to bitterness, which is the feeling. So joy is an emotion and happiness is a feeling, right? So in an effort to get rid of the emotions that make us feel uncomfortable, we try to separate ourselves from the feelings, all those unpleasant ones. What we don't realize is that positive and negative emotions work hand in hand and you can't really get rid of one without the other. For example, who in here likes disappointment? Nobody, right? You can't get rid of disappointment without getting rid of anticipation and excitement, right? So as we continue to chip away at our emotional arsenal, eventually we create a void. Creativity was my first step out of the funk that almost killed me. I did one thing on the day that I didn't want to, a coloring page, a sketch, a meal, even an outfit. And that was my first step to getting out of the void. I started feeling proud of myself. Hmm, I did that, not too bad. Another day I try another thing, it looks better, now I want to share it with my friends, who I miss so much, but I've been avoiding. So now I'm feeling the desire to connect. 
Eventually, I get out of my bedroom when I can tolerate sunlight again. And I do something else and someone pays me a compliment and I realize that I'm being seen. Oh my goodness, I'm feeling again. The thing is, being pulled in every direction, constantly being told that the only way to be successful is to monetize everything about myself, slowing down, trusting the process, releasing control, doesn't come easy to me. I'm constantly worried about the future, haunted by the past. There's barely space left for the present, and that's no way to live. And that's not just my story either. That is the story of more than half your friends. Because one in four people struggle with mental health worldwide. More than half of those come from low-income countries like mine, where three quarters of them don't receive treatment. Creativity saved my life. Not because I was dying, but because I wasn't living. We tend to look at death as what happens when we leave our physical bodies. But I've seen how death can be spiritual, mental, and emotional as well. So I've become committed to helping people to find, understand, and nurture their creative expression so that they can lead better lives. You see, what I've learned is that life, our full life, is more than just the magnitude of our careers or the size of our bank accounts. And I get it. Basic needs come first, but if you're not willing to take the time to enjoy the fruits of your labor, that fulfillment that you keep looking for will continue to elude you. Because we're taught that the good life requires us to rise and grind, hustle hard, and all the things, but that's not the full picture. Hustle culture fuels every notion in the back of our heads that says that we're not enough and we don't have enough. And these are the two fundamental feelings at the base of every belief system holding us back. When we ask for something and we receive it, and instead of taking a moment to savor the achievement and feel into the appreciation for what we've got, we move on to the next thing. That thing that we ask for turns into just another token on the shelf next to all the shiny objects we've been chasing instead of a meaningful addition to our lives. You see, gratitude is more than just saying thank you and reciting positive affirmations. Gratitude is also reflected in how we, re, how we express ourselves and the things that we ask for. And you can't fake it either. The gifter can always tell. And if you've ever gifted a toddler, who said thanks and proceeds to go and play with the empty cardboard box all day, you know exactly what I'm talking about. I've learned so much about myself through creativity. And it's more than just that I'm a lefty that can only use a scissors with my right hand. I've learned that I'm not very patient with myself. I also learned that my process looks different from everyone else and that's okay. I even found out that I don't hate the color green half as much as I thought I did. I found myself carrying many of these lessons over into my life and it provided a much needed change in perspective sometimes and this is how I was really able to thrive. So whether I need to release, reflect, receive, restore, I have a creative outlet for that. But one is more than enough, that's just personal preference. Life has its seasons after all and I find myself needing something different depending on where I am emotionally. So, illustration gives me a sense of control when I need it. When I need introspection, I do know. Calligraphy helps me to slow down. Watercolors show me what it truly means to trust the process. And I sketch to remind myself that there's beauty and imperfection. But cooking, gardening, and even photography are fantastic ways to express your creativity in a mindful way. When we create, we connect ourselves to this innate power within us that gives us the peace of mind of knowing that we are enough. So, I've learned to realize that life is more than just the things that we do to stay alive. 
going through the monotony of doing what it takes just to stay alive, go to work, eat, engage in your mind-numbing activity of choice until you doze off so that the cycle can repeat itself day after day is basic survival instinct. And I venture to say that there's more to you than that. Because living looks different from merely surviving or existing, it's more colorful. The more I created, the more I understood this and it became more non-negotiable for me. I've expressed myself creatively for so long. It's, it's essentially just become a part of me. And I learn to just carry the things that I learn every time that I try and every time that I teach somebody something, to teach myself something new about myself. Like there was this time, I had to design a dress for an event and I created this beautiful layered fabric necklace to accessorize it and everyone hated it. Someone literally sat in the audience and said, the person who made this should go kill themselves. True story. They saw me sitting there and pointed me out. It was rough, but it gave me so much peace to be able to tell myself, like the layers in a painting, this is a work in progress. A few months, tweaks, and clients later, this piece became the signature of my business and has now been worn by world leaders, celebrities, and everyday professionals alike. I mean, there was also that time I woke up and shaved my head for no good reason. As my hair started growing out in the year to come, I reminded myself, don't stop at the ugly phase. That's the point in any work of art where you're too far in to give up, but you're too far off to call it done. You know, when your hair is too long and too short to style, so you end up walking around in headscarves and braids all the time? Yes. At that point, I had two options go back and cut it again, or keep going and don't stop at the ugly phase. There's so many more examples, but this is why my personal mantra is to live colorfully. To remind myself that my life is about more than just one thing. It's more colorful. My challenge to you is to find that balance in your own life. Live colorfully, and the next time you introduce yourself, try to be more than your business card. You see, I'm still Kim from Bandbox, but I'm also a mom, a wife, serial creator, fabric hoarder, compulsive art supply buyer, apparently somebody who likes green, and so many more things to come. Who are you?